Joe at Red's Fly Shop here. I'm gonna do a product review and it's actually gonna be an endorsement because I've already tested this product and I'm in love with it. And we're out here in a mountain stream. I've got my young boys with me today. We are gonna go do some creek and we love doing this. We got a backpack full of drinks and sandwiches and we are gonna go hit the creek today. Uh, the product I am gonna show you, I'm madly in love with. Uh, it's the Echo River Glass uh, Rod. Comes in a very nice tube, I think for the price. Uh, the tube is actually a nice complement uh, to the rod. Comes with a nice shoulder strap there. Um, and if I were gonna backpack down the hill through a lot of brush, I would just tie this to the side of my pack and leave it in the sock. But I just wanna show you the rod. Comes with a nice sock. Uh, I fished this right next to the three weight the other day. Uh, both are six foot nine inches. And it's a three piece rod. Nice, just pure cork, classic reel seat. Just very reminiscent of a classic like bamboo fly rod or an original fiberglass rod. So first thing about glass, glass is tends to be durable. So when it comes to myself banging around in the brush with these rods down there, but more importantly, my sons banging the fly rods around in the brush down there, uh, glass tends to be very durable. Uh, the other thing it tends to do is it is very flexible. So as you're gonna see down there, we're gonna make a lot of little tiny casts at very close range. And uh, the flexibility of glass has just been an enormous advantage in those tight little situations. So that's just an intro to the product. I'm gonna throw my line on here in just a sec. We're gonna hike down this gorge and get creaking. Well, here we are. I have never been to this spot before. Uh, I use an app called Base Map to find all of my small streams that I'm gonna go to. And I set some markers uh, on my desktop in advance. For more information on how to do this, go look at the most recent episode on my podcast. I think it's on iTunes and Podbean. I think it's episode 44, Becoming an Independent Angler. I talk more about that. A lot of the tips I'm gonna give you here, I'll discuss in more detail there. But I've got this beautiful canyon down here. Oh my gosh. What we're going to do, the boys and I are going to jump in down here. We're going to work our way upstream and we're just going to fish, 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 fish. And I looked at a satellite image and this creek is going to bend away from the road and then it's going to come back to the road. And we're going to fish all the way up to that point using my smartphone uh, as an app. And then we'll hike out to the road and back to the Jeep, hopefully after catching a handful of nice trout. How I set my rod up, I want my leader at about no more than six feet for these short casts. So this rod is six feet, nine inches, and I've got a little bit of fly line coming out the tip here. There's my connection. In order to make very accurate, close casts, I have to have a short leader. If I'm making a 20 foot cast, it would be really hard to do with a 10 foot leader. I need to make a 20 foot cast. I'd much rather have a six foot leader and 14 feet of fly line. I'm gonna have far more control in order to do that. Uh, I use 3X Tippet. Uh, I have a cool lanyard set up. The tippet I'm gonna use is gonna be right there. I'm gonna see if I can get away with 3X Tippet. If these fish are bitey and they're good on 3X, that's heavy, strong line. I'm not gonna lose as many flies. I'm not gonna tangle as much. I'm not gonna snag as much. So I've got a really short leader. I start with a seven and a half footer. I cut a little bit out of the butt section, usually about 18 inches. 12 to 18 inches out of the butt section, a little bit off the tippet, and I make a really nice 3X, six to six and a half foot leader. So I'm gonna head downstream, and I'm gonna upstream dry fly fish back into this pool. Let's go see what happens. Okay, here we are, this beautiful mountain stream. One thing about small stream fishing is, hanging up your back casts on trees and brush and other things, or hitting these rocks is a real issue. So what I like to do is I like to get out right in the middle of the river. My back cast goes straight downstream, and I can throw my forward cast straight up, lay that, lay that fly right down the middle of the pool like that. Oh, I missed him. He hammered it, I missed him. Come on, there we go. Oh, I missed him again. Come on, little buddy. Oh, he's getting smart. I blew it twice. So same thing. I'm just gonna strip my line as it comes back toward me. There's another little guy. <laughs> I can never hook them up again.
Huh? Yep. What do I have here? Whatever I got, look at that band it's putting in my little two-way glass rod. That is cool. The thing about small streams is you don't want to think like a big river mindset. The fish are going to be in the main seams, generally right in the middle of the pool, in the main current, the main depth. I worked all the edges in here like this, and every bite I had was right over mid-channel, right in the mainstream. Those fish tend to want to be in the deepest part of the trough on small streams. So stick to the main flow, mid-river. We're going to bump up to the next pool and see if I can't actually land one to show it off the next bite. All right, we're going to work our way up to the next pool. A lot of times we're going to catch fish in small spots. That's why I love these little tiny rods. Being able to just put my fly back into those plantings like that right there. It's a tiny cast right in there. Maybe up under this cliff like that. Nobody home in that spot today. But with a little rod, I can just check it real quick, keep hiking, hopefully in the next spot. So what happened there? Dude, you're wet. Yeah. You're wet, dude. You got a little too close to the edge up there. Dude, how'd that swimming trip feel? Oh, well, that's actually pretty nice. <laughs> Let's go catch it. Alright. Well, we got a couple of problems. The cameraman has to go get the dog. This is the dog's first creek fishing trip, and the golden doodle is not one for swimming across the stream right here, unfortunately. So we gotta go get him and get him across by hand. Come on, come on, Timber. You can do it. You can do it, come on. No, not that way. Yeah, all right, we're gonna have to carry him. Glad we brought the dog. Okay, so the kid that was making fun of me for being an old guy and having a waiting staff, that's the second time I've personally seen you go down. I went down a couple other times. A couple other times? You're soaked, dude. They're totally hard timing me over using a wait. He just went down again. They were totally hard timing me for having a waiting staff. So much so my older son now has my waiting staff. These rocks are slick. Sticks. Waiting staff is a good thing. Don't fall in, little guy. You gonna go down a fourth time? <laughs> yeah, we can make this a bloopers comp. It's just you. <laughs> yes. After all that, I missed it. Yeah, let's see if I can get him again. When you, when you blow it and miss a fish like that, it's a good idea to just let him sit for about 15 or 20 seconds. Don't just smack it immediately back in. Okay, I'm gonna shoot again. Good cast. Good grip. One shoot. One off of the end this. Okay, I'm gonna move up just a little bit. I, now, I can't get the last little bit with a bow and arrow cast, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let out some line. And I'm going to do basically a little roll flip. There we go. There's one. Sometimes this creek fishing seems really, really easy, and sometimes it seems really, really hard. Right now, it's feeling like it's really easy. Let me get back in there again. Let's go. 
I'm just basically, I'm taking this little six foot nine inch rod. It's super flexible. I can make a very high speed. Go ahead and stand up, just and see if you can get me some mask on video. Don't worry about spoofing them. I think I already did all that. But basically, I'm able to take and get just enough line on the water that I can shoot my fly. My fly's all the way back up under that alder tree there. Come on. No bite there, but good fun. We're gonna move down the stream into the pocket of water, see if we can't get one in there. There we go. That's why we use a little itty bitty two way. What do we got? Sometimes I get brookies. That is some kind of native West Slope cut. Oh, he's a little guy. Oh, French fry size. Okay, I'm gonna fish a couple more spots. And I've had multiple requests from present company to quit videoing and quit fishing and help out the anglers that I'm guiding today, which are my two boys. So I hope some of these tips are helpful. I'm gonna leave you with one last tip uh, before we get going. Uh, when you work pocket water like this right here and you, you're having uh, sections with a lot of molders, I actually really like to throw my fly downstream and skate my fly on the surface just like so and dance and hover my fly. I know that's a little less conventional for dry fly fishing, but it gives the trout a lot more time to consider it. So I'm gonna get the boys fishing. I'm gonna help them out, but I hope some of the stuff about gear was useful. Um, one more tip about the short leader thing, because I know that a six foot leader is kind of unconventional for some. It really helps with your line not falling back through your rod as well. I know that's a common problem uh, among anglers uh, where the, 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 the line slips back through the rod. But when you have a really short meter, it's much easier to keep that line from falling back through the rod. It's just a more, much more practical way to fish these small streams. So hopefully some of this was healthy. Hopefully the fish grow. 13 inches is a whopper in this stream and that's what we're hunting for this afternoon. There you go, he's, he's, he's oriented right now. He's oriented right. Nice. All right, I got myself another mini. Another little cut bow. Mini. Beautiful little wild trout from the mountains. It's a little itty bitty guy. Little itty bitty guy, but I gotta tell you, I fished all over the world. And if going and catching these little guys in a beautiful place like this is good enough for me, I hope it's good enough for you. So I'm gonna get back to fishing with my kids. I uh, hope you learned some things on the video today that you can be of use for you on your next small stream fishing adventure. All right, what you got there, son? Little cutthroat. I'm just fishing before we're going. All right, so dad was like, last call, we gotta go. That's a nice, more, beautiful fish, man. That's gorgeous. It's my biggest one yet. Yeah, those are those are sweet, man. This is so much fun. I don't even want to touch them, man. We, you can keep fish here, but these ones I just don't feel right about. It. Cool. So tell me about fishing this little spot behind your your old man. I thought I hit all this water. Here, I'm just fishing these slower. You have this fast part right here, and I'm just fishing these slower moving lines, and they're stacked. There's no pools. How many did you catch? Four, how so many? Did your, how many did your dad catch? Today, three. No, right here in this spot. One. Yeah, and then you stepped in behind me and caught four. What do you think of the rod? It casts really well when it 